think that's the word is exactly okay so welcome back everybody so today is the lecture three and this series of lectures about geodes flow in on on manifold without conjugate points particularly so let's see so lecture three in this lecture we will mainly focus on measure of maximum entropy via via factor driven measures like we constant measure of maximum entropy via So if you so let me just say what this is about. Basically, okay. So we suppose that we have mg is our manifold with our conjugate points, with our conjugate points. And there is the usual, I mean, we proved in the first lecture that the universal cover X, universal cover is a copy of R and if N is of dimension, if N is of dimension N, this is a copy of R N. And yeah, we want to talk about measure of maximum entropy. First of all, there is a notion of entropy that, I mean, I suppose that most people know the definition of the topological entropy for a dynamic system in general, but in this case of geodesic flow, I just want to use something specific, like a, it's not the definition of entropy, but it's a formula that is specific to the geodesic flow. So I want to start with this very minute. I mean, very minute did it in no conjugate points, but it was already done in negative curvature by Manning that that you have this quantity that we call the topological entropy x dot of the geodesic flow pt remember this was the notation of the geodesic flow is just the limit when r goes to infinity of one over r log of volume of b p r so volume is respect to the metric G, okay? So this is the topological entropy for the geodesic flow with respect to this metric, where for any B in the universal color in X. Okay, this is not the definition, but it's a characterization in this case of the geodesic flow, and this is what I want to be using. Uh, you know, uh, it will be helpful to think of the entropy as a volume growth of balls the group of walls in the universal cover, okay? Yeah, and yeah, already from this, you can see that in surfaces, so uh, a corollary or an implication is that if MG is a surface, is a compact surface of genius at least two, at least two, at least two, then the topological entropy is positive. A stop of P. P is positive. Why? Because if I am on the surface of genes at least two, I know there is a metric of negative curvature inside. And the metric of negative curvature, we know that the balls they grow exponentially. And the metrics are comparable, like the, the circumferometer forms are comparable. So the volumes of this ball is comparable to the volume of the ball in negative curvature. So basically, the proof is that there exists G zero of negative curvature, and we know by equivalence of the matrix, the volume in G of B P R is comparable to volume in G zero of B P R. Okay, and then you see that when you have a background metric of negative curvature, you always have positive entropy. And now there is the usual, the very well known variational principle 
by rational principle that tells you that the topological entropy is the supremum of all metric entropies. So H top of Qt is the supremum of H mu of P1, where mu is P1 invariant and probability measure, okay? Probability measure. And this quantity here, H mu, is a metric entropy. I mean, I'm not going to write the definition, but today we will compute a metric entropy for a specific for a specific measure that I will construct, and then you will see the definition if you haven't seen it before. Is a metric entropy. So it's the entropy for this measure. So today's lecture is to construct a measure mu that we write the supremum. And that measure is called measure of maximum energy. Okay, so I will not spend too much time and so so construction of the measure. So yeah, so the rest of this talk will be just construction of the measure and then calculate the entropy of that measure and say to show that it is exactly the topological entropy. So some notation. So I, I write H. So this question the city actually is the topological entropy of the flow. Okay. I just write it by H. And then I write gamma to be the isometric group of the universal cover of X. And I mean it is very standard that you I'm, I'm not gonna prove it here, but there is an isomorphism between gamma and and the first fundamental group of M, there's a nice uh, like correspondence, like uh, elements of the fundamental group acts on the universal cover as isometries, and you can write M as a compact quotient by gamma. So gamma is a group of isometries. And to start, so see what we want to build is we want to build first a measure that is invariant by the geodesic. So remember, so I'm just gonna tell you the. So first of all, you wanna remember this was last week we defined our compactification of the universal cover with a boundary. Okay, so you take geodesic ray. Okay, the equivalence classes of geodesic ray. You wanna construct a measure that is invariant by the geodesic flow. Let's say that if you take a set. You iterate it by the geodesic flow. This two said they have the same measure. So, in particular, this measure should project to the boundary. Like you could project this measure, you know, you could project this set to the boundary. Basically, what I'm saying is that we have the space of geodesics, which is you know, one to one correspondence with, I mean, it's not one to one, okay? Um, so, what I want to say is that if I have an invariant measure here, it should define a measure on the space of your desk, which is just the, the, the product of boundary minus the diagonal. That's what I want to say. So, invariant measure is invariant by the Defines a measure on the product boundary on the you know measure on x squared minus the diagonal okay. because it just project to, to the boundary. So what we will do is that we will construct a measure on the boundary, and then we will now want to we want to project it to the Unitarian boundary of the universal cover. And how to do that is this Patterson Sullivan measure. So, first of all, there is this point carry series. Point carry series. That is defined by this quantity. So, you pick, pick P, Q in X and S in R. You define this quantity P, P, Q, S is just the sum. Along the isometric group, 
minus s distance between p and gamma q. This is a point I exist. And you know, it is proved by Cornell that this, if you have a, a, a you know, a Gromov hyperbolic manifold, which is in our case. So, Gromov hyperbolic, you can see it as this condition. If you take any pair of points, any triple of points, P1, P2, PR, P3, P3, if you take the geodesic joining these guys, you can find a fix, you can find a, there exists an R positive, so that if I take a R neighborhood of this geodesic, R neighborhood of this geodesic, R neighborhood of this one, I cover the whole, the whole triangle. And this is true in negative curvature. And it is also true here because of the, of the existence of background metric of negative curvature. Because if it is true in negative curvature, you can take any geodesic, you can find the corresponding mass correspondence between this and the other geodesic in no conjugate points. And you can easily see that this is true. So, Cornell proved that Gromov hyperbolic. This is just, this is the kind of hyperbolicity that you have in negative curvature, and here you have it in the case of no conjugate points with the background metric of negative curve. So Gromo hyperbolic implies that this guy, this point carry series, is finite when s is bigger than h. If S is bigger than the topological entropy, so it's finite. And this guy diverges if S is less or equal to H. So how do we use this? We use this point curve series now to define a family of matrices. So we define the so given. So this is the usual, you know, when you want to define in very measures. You 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 define Dirac deltas along an orbit, and then the limit measure you get the Ritz star limit will be an invariant measure. We are doing something similar here along along the gamma orbit, an orbit of an element by the isometric group. So given p x in x and s in r. Let's say S bigger than H. We define mu P X S to be one over P X X S times the sum gamma in gamma of exponential of minus X distance between P gamma X and then beta delta along the lines. So you're just taking the Dirac deltas along along the orbit of x by gamma, and you normalize by this one here. So, so it's not difficult to see that this measure, any limit of this measure will so. See that any limit of this measure when S goes to H will be a measure that is supported in the boundary because of this weight here. This weight is going to infinity. So if we take a, a, a compact set on your universal cover, the measure of that set is going to zero as S is converging to H because of this. But more precisely, we, we prove this, we prove this proposition. That there exists, so there exists a sequence SK converging to H 
such that for all p in x, no p x s k is converging in the weak star to no p. And moreover, we have these three properties. These three properties are very important. Each, I mean, each of them tells you something about the measure we are going to build at end. So, nu p, p in x is gamma equivalent. Gamma equivalent meaning that if I take a border set in the boundary, so as I said, this any limit will be a measure supporting the boundary because uh, if you take a compact, then as I said, it's going to make it go to zero. So you can think of this measure being a measure defined solely in the boundary. So if you take any Borel measurable set, you have mu gamma p gamma a equals mu p a for all gamma for all elementary. Okay. This will be very useful to the measure we will consider for the measure we will consider to be to be invariant by the geodesic flow. Because know that isometric they they commute with the geodesic flow. Okay, isometric means that it sends geodesic to geodesic. So it commutes with the geodesic flow. Having this property will help to define the measure that is that is invariant by the geodesic flow. A second property is also very important, which are that these measures are not singular. They are absolute continuous with respect to each other, and the density is given by Boltzmann function. Is exponential of minus h dp u z. So this is for z in boundary effects. This is also very useful. This is what. So remember, dp q z was the Boltzmann function. Attached to the geodesic joining P to Xi. So, so this is Xi and this is P. There is this geodesic, it defines a vector here, and then you take the Boltzmann function, you know, the Boltzmann function was just defined as I just recall it here, B P Q Xi equals B B Q, where V is this vector, is the limit. When t goes to infinity of distance between c d t q minus p, I define this in that lecture. So, Boltzmann functions are very useful here as they define the density of, of these fat and silver measures. And the last property is also very useful. It tells you that the measure that we will build is fully supported. The support of new p is the whole boundary. So this will be used to prove the uh, invariance. This will be used to calculate the entropy. And this is used to prove that the measure we will contact is fully supported. Like it gives positive measure to any open set. Right, so let's prove this three properties here. I mean, already to talk about limit, weak star limit for this measure, we need to see, first of all, this measure should be, you know, a finite measure and then like it gives finite measure to the whole compactification of the universal cover. And then you can, if you fix now a compact set, you can find, a, you can find this subsequent but now there is another trick. I mean, it's not really a trick. We we will do say that this same subsequence work, works for all elements in the universal cover. But let me just say that how why these family of measures. So these guys u p x s k of x union the boundary is finite. Why? Because if you look at the definition of this measure, if you look at the definition, actually it is, you can see that if you look at the definition, you just use a kind of a triangle inequality here, exponential of 
minus s this will be x gamma p gamma x this guy is less than exponential of s distance between p x times the distance exponential of minus s distance between x gamma x and here also you have similar bounds to this jang inequality exponential of minus s distance between e x exponential of minus s distance between x and gamma x so if you sum over all and you divide by px x what you will get here will be one okay what you will get here will be one and what you would get here would be would be yeah what you would get here so will be one because by definition of, of the point that I said, it's like you divide by this quantity. So what I'm basically saying is that mu p x s of x minus the boundary is less or equal to exponential s dp x and exponential of minus s dp x. Okay. So so. So this guy being compact, this said being compact. So you have at least a, a subsequent that converge. So if you fix fix k compact, so there exists S k converging H with that mu p x S k is converging in the weak star to nu p, so they define nu p as a limit. So for all p in k, all p in k, yeah, this is just using the fact that the space of probability dimensions is compact or, or finite measure in this case is just normalized. But it, it's a compact, and then you have a you have a compact in the weak star topology, so you have a you have a limit. And if k is compact, you have a limit for each p. For if, if k is compact, you can have a limit for, for, for all points in that compact set. But now you want to replace this set to k to, to x. You, you, here you just use the gamma equivalence of, of, of these measures. So basically, what I'm saying is here, by definition, here. Yeah. So by definition, Nu p x s at a is the same as nu gamma p x s gamma a. Just by definition here. Okay, so you see that these measures are gamma equivalent. So nu p x s. Is gamma okay. So this implies that if a subsequence works for a compact set, it works for gamma of that compact set for gamma is in top. What I'm saying here is, is that so same subsequence works for gamma k into a k for every gamma in gamma. So in particular, you have, and you can write m as the union of k, so gamma k, gamma in gamma is x. Okay? So you, you have one subsequent that works for all, and also the limit measure will be gamma equivalent because the sequence will, so you p, so A, the proof of A and B is gamma equivalent because U P X S K is so is gamma equivalent. Yeah, just by construction, okay? This is by construction. So this proves that this part. Now to prove this part, this uses something that is not very trivial in non-conjugate points, but in negative curvature, you can see it very natural. So let's write again the definition of the measure. So to prove B, you write nu 
x s in one of the two x x s to sum gamma and gamma of exponential of minus s to be p gamma x and then delta gamma x. What you do is you add and subtract here distance between q and gamma x. So you can derive this as mu p x s in one over p x x s then the sum gamma in gamma. So this guy exponential of minus s distance between q and gamma x and now exponential of minus s oh I, I'm, I'm forgetting h sorry there is an h in oh so no not h sorry there's just s sorry that's my time so there's s and s from both h that was so this is now distance between q gamma x minus distance between p gamma x and delta delta at gamma x so i just add and subtract this term what I'm telling that it's kind of easy in, in negative curvature is the fact that this quantity here is converging to the Boltzmann function. Yeah, this quantity. Let me draw a picture for that. So think of this is what you have here. You have P here and you have Q here. Okay, you have gamma, you know, a, uh, the orbit, uh, I did not say it, but this guy, the accumulation set, the accumulation point of the orbit of any points on the universal cover by this slope is, is the whole boundary. This guy is going to accumulate in the boundary. So you can think of this gamma x as a point that is converging to something in the boundary. Okay. So think of this is gamma x. It's a point that's going to, to the boundary. So what you're doing is you are measuring. You are taking the difference of these two distances when this point is going to the boundary, to the ideal boundary. Okay. And, and see that if you think of the definition of the of the Boltzmann function, this is exactly going to converge to, to this guy, which is the Boltzmann function at first of at the geodesic, where so let's say this guy is going to die. Here. So you can see that this distance. So in the in 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 non in negative in non conjugate points it requires a two, but here you can just see that in negative curvature the whole spheres they are limit of spheres. So you can just think of this point. You take a t circle or, or sphere around this point, and that guy is converging to the whole sphere when gamma is converging. Gamma x is converging to psi. So this difference, which is this quantity. Is will define the Boltzmann function. So the limit when z tends to die of distance between q z, uh, z minus distance between p z. This is b p q z. This is what I'm saying. Basically, this equality is true. Uh, I mean, we proved it in. I should know how it's done. Okay, I can have it. So, yeah, I will not go to the proof, but this is what we use to see that this is going to be the Guzman function. The picture is clear in negative curvature of that. It's a, it's a, it's a fact. I mean, it can follow from the fact that for a sphere, I mean, it's still, or another way to see it here also is that the Boltzmann function depends continuously on v. So, you, if you have this function, is a Boltzmann function. So the dependence on v, if you prove that it's continuous, you can also have it. Okay. Yeah. So that's just. So I don't know if there is a proposition. So, yeah. So basically, that will give that will give part two because what you have here is a Boltzmann function, and this is what you will be left with is nu p, nu p, 
nu p xi, okay? And the last part here, you see, you suppose by contradiction, suppose that there is a, suppose that the support is not the whole thing. That means that there is this mu in X often says that mu P of mu is zero. So in particular, in particular, nu gamma P at gamma U equals zero for all gamma. Yeah. Okay. Because we have gamma equivalents, okay? This is gamma equivalent. It's U this A. Okay. And if you use B now, you will see that this implies that nu P at gamma U is a same here. Right? Because they are absolute conditions respect to each other, these, uh, these measures. So in particular, nu p, this is for all gamma, nu p of, so this is something I did not say, but it's true that the, this actually is, is transitive in the boundary, but hmm. this is something I, uh, I did not say, but okay, I should write here the union of gamma u or gamma in gamma is zero. And this gives a contradiction that these measures are fully continuous respect to each other because this would give zero to the full boundary. I did not say it, but the action of gamma in the in the in the boundary is, is transitive. Like uh, if you take an open set, you is going to cover all the you're going to cover all the you're going to cover the whole boundary. So this is new p of boundary of x is zero, which is a contradiction. So you have these three very important properties. Okay, so yeah, maybe I can erase it now. But So, yeah, so what we want to do now, we want from this measure, we want to build um, from these feminist measures, we want to build a measure on the unit changing bundle that is in the end that we do that. So, one way, a way to do it is, you know, so now I have this family, new P, the pattern to the They satisfy this, these three properties. And so now I can define, uh, define, define mu bar on the product of the boundary minus the diagonal, which is like the space of your diagonal by g mu bar equals. So you put a density here. So I will say what is that uh, by eta, which is exponential of minus h eta p eta eta. I will say what this quantity is. So and g mu p xi g mu p p. So where b Desire is called sometimes, uh, uh, some people call it the Bromo product or the uh, horospherical distance, which is like this. If I have x union to bound of x, I have two points are eta. I have a point p somewhere. I look at the horosphere as at p, and then the horosphere, so at that xi and eta going to p, and I take a geodesic connecting these two guys. And this distance is beta p psi. So that distance is beta p psi. Okay. So uh, there are some technicalities here in non-conjugate 
points because I might have multiple geodesics joining side to each other. But you can prove that if you have also another geodesic joining side to each other, these two distances are the same. Okay, you can prove that it's both other directions. It's not very difficult. You just use the invariance of this of this by the geodesic by the geodesic field. Yeah, so that's this quantity here. You can also define it by the Hoogman function. It's, this is another alternative that only, uh, uh, another definition is dp q xi plus dp q eta. See that this is the same definition. But geometrically, this is the one. And And yeah, so you have this measure, and this measure is very nice actually because it's a product measure, and that is key in, in what is going to come next, probably in the next lecture. The fact that this measure has a product structure because it's given by product measures. And an exercise actually is that check that this guy is gamma if you buy it, check that. V bar is gamma equivalent. Because remember, we want to build a measure that will be very by the given flow and then. Yeah, so, and there's again another technicality that we are facing in this uh, in this uh, case of geodesic flow without conjugate points is what I just said here. If you define this map, so P that is defined from Sx, this is the unit tangent bundle to the boundary of x square minus the diagonal. So what does this do? It just takes V gives V minus V plus. That's this defined by you know this this is under the line to go down to go down. So I have V, I just Take the two endpoints. So this is V, this is V plus, and this is V minus. But I'm saying even in non no non-positive curvature, this map is not is not bijective. It's not a bijection. Why? Think of think of just this simple case. You have this simple. Surface right here, you have negative curvature, here you have negative curvature, and you have here the curvature is zero. So all these geodesic here that are closed geodesic, if you look at them, they stay at a bounded distance. Even if you in the universal power, they stay at a bounded distance. So they define the same endpoints. So you might have this picture here. So E is not a bijection. So, and to, to project this measure to the unit tangent bundle, we would like to use this map E. I mean, if it was a bijection, or we would say, if you're familiar with this uh, term of expensivity, if the geodesic flow was expensive, which means that you don't have this feature, you could just project it using the map E, using the inverse of the map, okay? But here we can't do that. But what we could do, which is you know uh, very technical, is that so this part we prove it in our paper. I mean, yeah, in our paper is that uh, there is a measurable choice of an inverse, and that measurable choice, that that choice is gamma equivalent. So there is measurable we needed to make this like, like this choice of because we want to we want to project it we want to choose the guy so this choice we have to do it globally in a measurable way and we also have to do it in a gamma equivalent way because we want the limit the measure that we are building to be given by the jury the group there is a there is a a measurable choice of an inverse so I mean, uh, so this is this abstract theorem of unbalanced and stuff, but you can look at the paper if you want to see it. Uh, there's a measurable choice of an inverse 
of e. So let's just write it e minus one here. Okay? And that is gamma equivalent. Gamma equivalent. Gamma equivalent in the sense that you know if you do e minus one of of if you do this, if you do gamma, gamma xi, gamma, gamma minus one, gamma theta, what you get is e minus one of xi theta. So once you have that, you can now project this measure to the unit tending model provided so to this. You take for A, a measure was set in the unit and in bundle. You take mu tilde of A is, you take the square minus the diagonal and the length of A intersect. The length of A intersect means E minus one. Of the eta. So this is this joy, okay? Sorry. The mean bar of the eta. So this defines a measure on the unit tangent bundle. So mu bar on Sx. And mu bar is gamma equivalent by construction. So mu bar is flow invariant. Is 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 been by the geodesic flow, and and moreover, uh, you know, see that this measure is a finite measure on compact sets. So if I take here a compact set, so if K in S X compact, I'm saying that the shoulder of K is finite. Why is that? Because look at the only way that this quantity blow up to infinity is that this guy blow up to infinity. The chroma product is going to infinity. And this chroma product is going to infinity only when xi and eta, like, like xi is approaching eta. So if xi is approaching eta, you see that the chroma product is going to infinity, but that's not gonna happen when you fix a compact set. When you fix a compact set, these two, you know, the their the projection there, you know, you have this one being uniformly bound by something depending on the compact set. So once you have this, and mu tilde is gamma equivalent, imply that it, 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 it goes through the portion. So mu tilde defines, you know, it descends to the portion, defines the measure mu on Sm, the unit tangent bundle of your manifold. Okay, because remember uh, the, the manifold was just compact quotient by gamma. So something that's invariant by the group of isometries will go down to this will take time. Okay, 15 minutes. All right. So I have to prove now that this measure has full entropy, like uh, the entropy of this measure is the first entropy in 15 minutes. So, lemma. so if you don't know yet what the metric entropy is, don't worry too much. I will, you will see something that, that defines it. So of mu, is H, which is the topological entropy. So I'm sorry, I might be very, okay. 15 minutes. Okay, maybe I can try. So there is this, again, before we prove this, there are some preliminaries. So see that I mean, there is this part, I mean, as lemma will but is that given oh yeah 
So see that. So to, cal to, to calculate the entropy, the metric entropy, you have to calculate, you know, measure of the sets, okay? And to calculate measure of, some of these sets, what we do usually is we project them to the boundary and then we look at mu bar on the boundary. So we're going to define, we're going to need this, this kind of projection. So given Yes. So given that in the boundary of X and P in X, we define this kind of projection. P R Z, which is defined from X to the boundary and P R P, which is from X minus P to the boundary. So this map is just doing this. This is the propagation. This is Xi here. And this is, if you take a point X here, so you take the geodesic zone inside X and you send it to the other side of the boundary and that gives you this new PR Xi X. Okay, similarly here, this map, now this is a useful tool, you know, you do to project these cells to the boundary to be able to calculate the measures. So if I take P here and X here, X another point, I also draw this geodesic and then this is PR, this point here is PR, P, X. Okay, so this is just a way to define and there is this part, this is why, I mean, I don't want to write it as a lemma, but you will see that it's so. open. That for all x in x bar, so I should have been using using this notation just to simplify a lot. So x bar is a propagation, and p in x. There is an answer that this guy contains an open set. P r x of b p r contains an open set. Okay. You project a ball to the boundary if you contain an open set. This is uh, uh, almost trivial by again using Morse correspondence. So yeah, this is just saying that remember how how open sets are defined the boundary. To find an open set, I fix a vector in an angle. I fix an angle epsilon. I send this, this is a boundary. So this defines an open set. So remember the open set, remember this map FP, which is FPX to the boundary. So the topology is given by the, you know, for that this map is from a more place. Okay. So this is how open sets are defined. And, you know, to see this part, we use this Mons lemma. Mons lemma, because you can do it for negative curvature and you do it via uh, Mons lemma for this metric development. And after that, there is this proposition that measures now this set. So it tells you that for all rho bigger than this r, there exists L positive such that mu p p r x p the row this guy is bigger than L. This is N. It's just saying that if you project these guys, because all these sets, they contain an open set. You're just proving that this open set is not like getting smaller. Like there is a, you know, there is a lower bound in the measure of the open set that, that you get from projecting a board that is big enough. B is that one over B. Okay, I should just say that mu P of P R Z B X rho, this guy is comparable to comparable. I mean, there is a constant, uh, you know, from each side is comparable to exponential of minus H 
distance between Px. Here H is entropy, and you have the same thing. So xi is in the boundary. You have also the same thing when you take x on the so I should say this is true for all xi. Okay, I should put here x uh Let's see, is that new P of PRP of B X So is that so comparable to exponential of minus H distance between P P P X. This the, the constant you have might be different from here and there. Maybe I won't prove this. I have just 10 minutes to uh, so. Let me just say in words why by this is true. For instance, see that B and C, you just get them from, from A. So to just a sketch because I'm running out of time and I just want to, I, I really want to prove that the measure has full entropy. Okay. So A gives B and C. Why you just use the property that I proved? So use this property d mu p over d mu q. This guy is exponential of xi minus h d p q xi. So if you have if you have no p opposite a will be just given by the integral of exponential of minus h b p q xi d mu q xi on a and you can see that xi here You can just see that this is the same as you know writing. You do this. Actually, I said I wasn't going to do the proof, but now I'm doing it. B P P Z. This is of the same order plus. Distance between I add and subtract Q Zan. Think. Yes. Oh, I should, I did something wrong here. So what I mean here. So this is D mu P P Z times D mu P Z. So you add and subtract, you see that this is of the order of a constant times the measure. You add and subtract the distance, so this is of the order of distance between. So you, you, you what you have is a constant times exponential of minus h distance between. I don't know why I use q where I should use x. I was using x here, so let me. X. I think I'm, I might not be doing this properly. Because you add and subtract this this quantity, this distance, and then you see that the other quantity you have will be uniformly bounded, and you can have this. So A implies B and C, but to see to get A, so I will not 
do the proof of A because I really want to have five minutes, or maybe I should just do it and then next lecture I will start by proving that the entropy is full. Yeah, because I think I saw five minutes is too small. Yeah, okay, I, mean, I will just prove A. Yeah, and then in the next lecture, we will just need 10 minutes to prove the entropy. Just Yes. So let's try to prove A is that these sets they are not. So first of all, there is this fact that we start with that. So fix a compact set K, compact set K X. For all for rho bigger than R, R is a fixed radius, and this R will be given by depending on the most correspondent, the, the, the distance you have, you know, the R you have in the most lemma. There is the, for every epsilon, there exists epsilon, the, for every rho, sorry, there is epsilon positive, says that if you pick, if you pick P, I will draw a picture for this, you will see it. Yes. Obvious and x in the closure. So you have the c epsilon. I will say what what are these quantities is a subset of p r x b p rho. So for b for some b in s x x and c epsilon is this guy. Right, this is b. This is B and C epsilon is this open set you get by taking an angle around B, okay? C epsilon B for some B. So the, the picture for this, for this part is that so this is what I'm saying. You have your compatification. And you have a set K. K, this is K. So this is X bar. And you have X, a point here. This is X. You want to find a vector at X for which the angle around that point. So, for instance, if I take this here, there's a given for this vector that goes. Right in the middle of K. If I project, so so now epsilon C epsilon will be here, C epsilon B will be here. So obviously, if I project this set here, it's going to contain C B epsilon. So and this big set here, you know, so this big set here will be. P R X of B B rho. I mean, yeah, you just take a vector that will try to, yeah, and then, yeah, this is the idea to get this part. And from this, so we know that. Because the measure is not singular, for every, for every epsilon, there exists L that might depend on epsilon such that mu P of C epsilon V is bigger than L. Okay. Because these are open sets. This is how open sets are defined. This is how the topology of this guy is defined. And this measure being fully supported, it tells you that you find this. You find this, you find this lower bound in the mesh. And once you have this, to get to get to this part, what you use is just that this guy contains 
C epsilon V, and you use the, how do you call it, the, the gamma equivalent. So this guy, no P, no gamma P, gamma C epsilon V. is equals nu p of gamma of c epsilon v by gamma equivalence. So this is gamma equivalent. And what you basically do, you have this set here and you have another point. If you project it, that projection will contain one of these, one of these gamma c epsilon. And this guy, they have the same measure that is bounded. This is bounded by below by L. So in particular, you get nu P of PR X BP rho is bigger than L. Because it contains, it always contains these, these steps. So yeah, um, I'm just out of time. I thought I would, but we are just left about you know adding these pieces to to calculate the measure of uh, the entropy of this measure that we constructed. And we will see that it has full entropy, like the entropy of this measure is the topological entropy. So I think I'm going to stop here. So, next lecture, what I will do is I will first use the first 10 minutes to do this estimate to calculate the entropy of the measure using what we have. Just these three properties are enough. And and then yeah, and then I will prove some other properties like mixing and ergodicity of this measure. And then yeah, we will see what more we can do. So I will stop here for today. If there are questions, so I'm uh, open to ask or to answer questions. So. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, could you explain more about the? Choice, measurable choice of the on uh, on uh, inverse of e. Yes. So this is really using the. Uh, this is really using the the hand banach theorem. I'm not sure if uh. So. Well, it's a yeah. I sh so I think. Let me see if I want to. So maybe uh, at the beginning of next lecture, I will start by explaining this, this choice, but it is based on these abstract results of, of Hunt Banach. And, and I'm not sure there is enough time to, to do it all, but I will, I will, I will talk about it and, uh, at the beginning of next lecture. For sure. Thank you very much. Questions? Okay, thank you. So, uh, see you. Uh, so, not that uh, on Thursday there is a change of time. So, the lecture is at 2 p.m. Italian time, okay? 2 p.m. instead of 4. So, the time is 2, and we will have two hours. Thank you.